Moving forward. I'm talking about um, Munich as a case study. Um, I'm, the issue is um, governing mobilities. Um, that's an issue which is um, part of my research since many years, more than 20 years um, so far. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is because, um, because I think learning from some case studies about how um, actors, how stakeholders are working together um, by finding new solutions, new ways, new strategies to deal with sustainable mobility or to uh, deal with the unintended consequences of mobility and transport um, is something we need to learn more about. Um, it's, for me, um, Munich is a very important case study for how go to govern mobility in the mobile risk society. Um, the risk society is a concept that I'm, that I'm working on for many, many years. Sustainable mobility um, is not only um, a question of uh, finding the right concepts, finding the right policies, the right strategies. It's also um, an issue of finding the right way of working together, of collaborating um, in, in, uh, on problem uh, issues and um, on finding ways to deal with um, the, the consequences of mobility, of a mo mobile lifestyle um, of mobile lives in, in that world in there we, there we live today. Um, the major issue is actually how can we increase the level of reflexivity in the mobile risk society, in, in urban environments, in, in cities. How can we um, reflect about the consequences, about the historical developments, about the future of mobility. Um, in a proactive way, so that we are actually find ways of how to develop mobility and transport or mobilities um, into a desirable future, um, into a future where we think that it's, it's good to live in, it's good to, to be there and to um, not to threaten the future of um, the generations which are coming after us. So what I'm doing now is I'm telling a sort of, I call it an urban narrative. Um, it's a story about uh, Munich and it's, uh, it's about how the last 20 years have been um, working in, in the city of, in a southern city, um, capital city in, in, in southern Germany. Um, one of the, the historical uh, momentums in, in that story is um, that in 1993 um, a new Lord Mayor was elected in, in the city of Munich. Um, at this time, mobility and transport has been something which um, well, I would call it like a, there was a social explosivity in, in that issue of transport and mobility, um, which was kind of um, explosive for the whole social structure of the city. Um, one of the, the major issues, the discussions, the discourses at this time was about building new tunnels in, in the city of Munich, building, let's say, um, moving on with the car-dependent city, um, moving on with increasing infrastructures, increasing capacities for, um, for car traffic in, in the city of Munich. And that was a really, really, really heavy and, and, and uh, kind of nearly violent fight um, in, in the, the urban society uh, of Munich. Um, this happened in, in, a, in a situation um, in the 1980s and the early 1990s in, in Munich where um, collaboration, cooperation between the city of Munich, the planning departments, the different departments of the, of, the, of the city, the industry, the civil society was actually nearly impossible. So nobody was actually able to sit around the same table and to think about what kind of solutions we can find for increasing mobility, increasing traffic um, in the city of Munich. And then suddenly there, there came up uh, something what um, one of the, 
the advisors of the, of the new Lord Mayor said, um, we should think about to get the enemies on board and row a little bit slower with that. Um, not to go into um, the well, well-known and, and so far successful strategies, but to think about how we can change actually the way of, um, of working together and, um, and um, bringing new ideas, new inno innovations into the, uh, what uh, mobility policies um, have been at this time. What they did, and this is, this is actually part of the, the argument, because um, I, I started by saying um, we need to think about how to increase the level of, of reflexivity is, um, that the city of, of Munich, together with um, the BMW group, you know, that BMW is the, the most important car, one of the most important car producers in Germany, but it's located in Munich, and it has his, his, its, um, its headquarter in Munich, so it's, it's one of the powerful players in, in the city of Munich. And they've been deciding together to go to a remote place somewhere in the, in the, in the mountains, um, which is called Inzel. And this was actually a sort of turning point for the whole governance structure in, in the city of Munich, because um, BMW, the city of Munich, together with the trade unions, together with um, the public transport providers and many other, um, a number of more than 20 different, different stakeholders went to that place and they did together what they call a future workshop. Let's think about the future of, of mobility and transport in the city of Munich. What came out of that is, on, on the first hand, is, um, is an institutional or a new institution which is called the Intel Initiative. Um, the Intel Initiative is, um, is still alive, it's still working, it's still um, one of the major deliberative um, institutions in the city of Munich. And what also came out of that is 11 pr principles for spatial planning and mobility in, in Munich. 11 principles um, which have kind of restructured and reframed the discourse on mobility and transport in the city of Munich and which is important still today. Um, it's always a reference point when a new plan um, is, is made to think about does it fit to these 11 principles which have been developed in, the 19, in 1995. So um, what, what I'm saying is that um, what came up is um, a new post-confrontative um, situation actually, a new situation where collaboration and collaborative planning was the new paradigm, paradigm um, of making transport and mobility policies in the city of Munich. This new post-confrontative setting and this post-confrontative um, interaction structure amongst the stakeholders in Munich um, has generated a few results. Um, so um, significant uh, new policies came out of that. Uh, one thing is that a long discussion in the city of Munich actually ended um, in this, this INSEL initiative um, by developing a new parking scheme for cars in the city centre. It has been a strong, a heavy fight about um, to let the cars into the city and how to deal with that. And it's, it took many, many years um, until the end of the 90s um, to, to find a solution for that. But it was actually <coughs> possible in, in this new collaboration structure. The other thing is that um, one of the, I'm just mentioning a few um, thing of, things or um, aspects of that, is that um, something like corporate mobility management has become some kind of new frame for um, dealing with the consequences of mobility and it has been become one of the major issues um, in, in mobility um, well, from the planning department um, very much in, in, um, promoted in uh, the planning department and other departments in, in the city of Munich. It's, it's became promoted by that. Um, not a direct outcome of that but um, it's, it's in connection with that is that um, in, in the later years, um, so in the recent years actually, Munich started to make a new bicycle campaign. The bicycle share in, in Munich um, has been increasing from 14% to about 20% during the last years. And it's in increasingly, um, or it's, it's about to increase um, further on. 
So that's, that's all things um, that actually have to do with that. And the very recent development in, in, in that um, new governance structure is that um, the, uh, the members of the INSEL initiative have been starting thinking about the future of, of mobility. So how can f uh, the mobility in the city of Munich look like in, let's say, 2050? Um, what they did, they developed a vision 2050 um, of uh, mobility and, and transport in, in Munich. And um, in, there happened a few years ago um, a workshop where they tried to bring together all the different, different ideas about how to, to shape and to structure the future of mobility. And um, the Munich-based Munich company, um, the, uh, the Innovationsmanufaktur, they made a picture out of that. They mapped out this, all these different ideas on the, the regional scale of this, the, the region of Munich. And they, um, in that workshop, um, they, they started to, to, to develop a, a, um, a structure which says planning and organization, structures, infrastructures and mo new mobility concepts. Um, and they mapped out really a lot of different, different um, ideas which are currently in the air and how the future of mobility can look like. What we need to say um, on that is that I think this, the whole development which started in 1995 um, until today um, made it possible that, that um, all these, these different, different stakeholders from the, city of, uh, from the city of Munich and the, the Chamber of Commerce and the industry and um, civil society um, groups, um, they've been working together on that vision. And I think it's a big achievement to come to that point, and, um, to, which is kind of symbolizing a, a social and also a cultural change in the, the interaction of the, these actors. Um, it documents that there is a new mobility of ideas, which are ideas, new concepts are traveling through that space of, of possible, um, possible um, yeah, possibilities to, to shape and to, to, um, to govern mobility in, in, in the future. Um, but what is also important to say is that, um, that this is so far, if we look on that, um, that map, um, it's like a to-do list, a to-do list for politicians, for urban planners and the industry. All these projects and concepts that are mentioned in that, in that map um, are more or less already there or all more or less um, in the air. So that means things like mobility cards, seamless mobility, mobile ticketing, um, date, new forms of data management, intelligent transport systems and so far is already there. But what is actually missing in that perspective is um, a kind of what I call the subject-oriented perspective. So where are the, well, in, in, in a more economic language, I would say, where is the end user in that? Um, so where do we think about what is the mobility practice of people and what is the, what is the specific needs of people to, um, to shape and to form and to organize them, their mobility in that urban system? in that urban space. Um, one of the problems, I think, is that um, it's a, what has happened there is a kind of stabilizing and institutionalizing of an expert discourse, which is somehow decoupled from people's needs, people's situation, um, the citizens as such, or the users of, of mobility systems, and in the end, their social realities and everyday mobility practices. And I think um, that brings me actually to the beginning of what, I, what I, my talk um, is how can we increase this level of reflexivity and how can we increase the, let's say, the embeddedness of um, these processes of thinking about the future of mobility to society and how can we link that together. And um, 
I've brought you a, a short video um, from, an, from a Munich artist, um, Mark Weiss. Um, and in that, that video, um, actually it's not only one, one, one artist, it's a group of two, um, they called M plus M. Um, and what they do is they have a nice idea about a reflexive loop. In that video, um, these two artists, they show that people are driving on a motorway and then they are entering this kind of reflexive loop and um, from that reflexive loop they can decide by themselves when they go out again back to that main road of the highway and probably they have the opportunity to decide if they stay on that road or if they take the next exit to change into a new direction. And I think this is what we can learn from the, from the story that I've been trying to tell you um, is that these reflexive loops or these possibilities to think out of the box, they can change mobility discourses and they can change the structure of how we think about the future of, of mobility.